Just like you can depend on every random food item suddenly being pumpkin spice flavored for two months in the fall. Seriously, who was asking for pumpkin ramen? When the leaves change, a new Call of Duty is not far behind. And guess what? X-Play's got a copy of Call of Duty Vanguard in one hand and a cup of piping hot orange noodles in the other. Time to hit the front line. Charge! Go, go, go! Forward! The Call of Duty franchise is almost 20 years old, which means it's old enough to fight in the wars it depicts. Lately, COD has explored our military future and spun conspiracy theories that would make Q proud. But this time, it's heading back to where it all began. WW Dose. I have lots of thoughts on the campaign, and the Black Hokage is bravely launching into the realm of multiplayer, so this review is going to be fought on two fronts. Does Vanguard up the firepower of multiplayer, or is it the same thing we've been playing for years? Let's find out. Oh, and Zombie Mode 2, which is, oh, uh, I'm gonna get into it. Oh, and stick around to the end, because this time, we're giving it a score. Grandpa, you'd be proud of us. It's time to answer the call of Call of Duty Vanguard. First up, the campaign. Just like you don't go to Disneyland for the food options, not many folks go to Call of Duty just for its campaign. The Call of Duty franchise has survived off of its multiplayer for years now, and while the campaigns have given us notable moments in gaming history, you never find someone at the water cooler saying, boy howdy, I can't wait to see what stories and characters the Call of Duty campaign introduces to me after I finish today's TPS reports. Continuing my food metaphors, the COD campaign is the amused bouche of the over overall game experience. Oh, now I'm hungry. Vanguard is the first Call of Duty to return to World War II since Sledgehammer Games' Call of Duty World War II. Wow, they really ran out of title ideas for a while there. The campaign takes place in a historically inspired 1945, when the Allied powers generally consider Nazis bad, which apparently isn't always the case anymore. The storyline's maps and operators are all influenced by real people, places, and events that don't get a lot of play in the history books, especially if that history book is printed in Texas. Vanguard's campaign is a non-linear narrative centered around five operators who have been brought together to uncover the secrets of Project Phoenix. And out of all the characters you are introduced to, the two that really shine the brightest are Polina Petrova and Arthur Kingsley. Through Arthur's D-Day mission, which has one of the coolest openings in the entire game, we see him go from paratrooper to leader, and those leadership skills are exemplified throughout the narration and framing of the campaign. But it is Polina Petrova who is the heart of Vanguard. Polina isn't someone who we see immediately on a battlefield. She is thrust into it, against her will, with her home becoming a literal war zone, giving her the most stakes and heart throughout the game. The campaign overall is slightly better than its predecessors. The story is definitely the highlight, but the overall gameplay experience is pretty mired in always having to figure out what the game wants you to do. Each character comes with their own unique skills and abilities that are specific to them. Arthur can call out commands for other NPCs to do. Polina can rapidly climb walls and throw Molotovs. Lucas Riggs can carry an ungodly amount of explosives and aim them with LeBron-like accuracy. And then Wade Jackson, the pilot, gets this weird focus ability that feels like Dishonored's dark vision, and then in combat, turns into Deadeye from Red Dead Redemption. Who knows? Maybe in some connected video game universe, Wade Jackson is a distant relative and descendant of Arthur Morgan or John Marston. However, you only truly have one to two chances to play as each character before the finale. So each time you step into their unique pair of World War II boots, you'll be constantly re-familiarizing yourself with each ability. Since each mission and the overall campaign is so short, it feels like half the game is a daisy chain of tutorials. This is a game that really benefits from you taking your time with the campaign and not rushing through all four to six hours haphazardly. Just like a dense, flourless chocolate cake, tiny bites help accentuate the experience, and shoving the whole thing into your mouth will leave you feeling overwhelmed and disappointed in your choices, all at the same time. 
And on the topic of the finale, I found it to not be as spectacular compared to the rest of the game. Watching the world literally collapse around you in Stalingrad, parachuting down on D-Day, or even jumping between moving train cars are the thrilling kinds of Call of Duty moments I want to experience. And the climax just feels like a standard mid-campaign mission rather than a star-studded finale. Overall, the strengths of Vanguard's campaign lie within its technically stunning lighting and audio design, and its rich narrative. But sadly, the marriage of story and gameplay isn't enough to make it an exceptional aspect of the game. Alright, now it's time to talk about the core of Call of Duty, the multiplayer. Vanguard hit the ground running with the release of 20 maps at launch and 8 different multiplayer modes. These range from your classics like Domination, Search and Destroy, Team Deathmatch and Kill Confirm to brand new modes like Patrol and Champion Hill. Now immediately, Patrol stood out to me. It's similar to Hardpoint, but the point itself is constantly moving around the map. This is a good thing because it forces people out of camping and it encourages the fast-paced kills and the action you want out of a Call of Duty multiplayer match. Likewise, various maps now feature destructible environmental pieces, so you'll have to be especially cognizant of where you are at all times because you never know when the door next to you can simply be blown off its hinges by the other team. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of my enjoyment spectrum is Champion Hill's mode. Champion Hill is the love child of King of the Hill and BR, and it's not fun in my opinion, it's, it's just not. The maps for Champion Hill are small and congested, so it doesn't feel skill-based, but rather purely right time, right place, right operator, right team-based. And speaking of maps, I would not be lying if I said that Vanguard's multiplayer feels a lot like Modern Warfare's but with a vintage coat of paint. In fact, many of the maps are reskinned from previous games, which can be fun if the issues of the original map are fixed, which it feels like they're not. Like, there's nothing more frustrating than spawning right on top of an enemy and just getting filled with bullets or even a flamethrower as soon as you take your first baby steps post-respawn. But when the game works, it really works. The weapon customization is the deepest I've ever seen. You can really have a detailed hand in your loadouts, scopes, grips, ammo types, and more. It's easy to lose track of the time customizing your skills and loadouts into the combos that best suit your gameplay style. Additionally, each operator comes with their own unique perks, unlocks, and introductory cutscene. While it takes a while to unlock all 12, there's definitely that sense of gamer pride when you add one more character to your team. Ultimately, the more I played, the more I felt myself enjoying it and I kept coming back for more. It certainly kept me more interested and engaged than Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. In fact, I can definitely see myself playing this one longer too. Until Battlefield 2042 releases, uh, and then Halo Infinite multiplayer, and uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. Damn, uh, they really gave us all these multiplayer games at the same time, didn't they? One last note from my own experience right now. I would say don't get this game on the PS5. I'm not lying. At the time we're recording this review, I tried playing it on my console and experienced lag and stuttering issues. Bruh. All right, f this, y'all. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're buying the PC version. I can't do this, bruh. I am not this bad. Y'all seen me play Apex. I am not this f***ing bad at games. I refuse to believe it. Bruh, that feels so much. I knew, I know I'm not this bad at games. I knew it. <laughs> oh, no. No! I hit the wrong button. Hopefully those performance issues are patched pretty soon, but in the meantime, I personally would recommend playing Call of Duty Vanguard strictly on the PC for peak performance and picture quality. And now we need to talk the zombie mode, but uh, no one wanted to do it, so we brought in an actual zombie. Oh, oh, oh excuse me. Mm. Thank you, the Black Hokage. Call of Duty, what happened? Der Onfong? More like, they're awful. This is one of the weakest zombie modes I've ever seen. And that's coming from a guy whose eyes haven't had blood pumping through them since 1903. The time between objectives is enough to make me feel like I've died again. Just the same repetitive motions of crafting, upgrades, jumping through portals, drinking a mystery substance to gain powers, jumping back through portals again. It's enough to make you want to stay dead. Players want a fast-paced gameplay experience that allows them to mow me and my brethren down all the while hunting for the narratives hidden in easter eggs throughout the map. Not this. My brain may be cold, but here's an idea. Give us Shadows of Evil again. A fun and challenging map that allows for creative exploration and non-stop zombie killing action. Look, just go back to the classic round-based zombie gameplay style. If it ain't broke, 
don't fix it. Or in my case, if it ain't dead, don't kill it. And then revive it. Thanks to the powers of Dark Aether God. You got the gist of it. Wow. Okay. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your, I'm, I'm going to assume, busy schedule to share that with us, zombie. Anytime, Adam Black Hokage. I'm a huge fan. <sighs> And now that we've said all that, it's time to get to what you're really here for. That's right, it's Moment of Glory time. This week's Steel Series Moment of Glory goes to Ludmia Pavlyshenko, the legendary sniper whose story inspired the protagonist in Call of Duty Vanguard. Pavlyshenko was a sniper for the Soviet Red Army during World War II. During her brief year spent on the battlefield, she racked up 309 confirmed kills before she was even 25. Her virtuoso skill at dropping Nazis earned her the nickname Lady Death. The sounds you're currently hearing are streamers worldwide crying at that god tier KD ratio. Given that track record, it only makes sense that the team behind Call of Duty Vanguard modeled Lieutenant Polina Petrova, one of the game's protagonists, off the legendary Soviet sniper. I don't know about you, but anyone who forged a friendship with Eleanor Roosevelt because they excelled at wrecking Nazis is worth all the glory. So here's to you, Ludmia Pavlyshenko. May your legend live on. Ultimately, Call of Duty Vanguard is an average next installment in the series. While there are a few standout elements, from its narrative writing to the multiple facets of multiplayer, these features alone do not outweigh the return to formula and refractory gameplay for all modes of Vanguard. And with so many other multiplayer franchises also dropping around Call of Duty, releasing a game with unsatisfactory maps and modes is detrimental. It's a multiplayer dog-eat, multiplayer dog world. With a bit of polish across all three games' facets, we could be looking at a celebrated next-gen Call of Duty game. But in its current state, Vanguard just feels like another standard chapter in the Call of Duty history books. Which is why, together, we've come to the conclusion that Call of Duty Vanguard gets a 3 out of 5. But we're not the only ones who have strong thoughts on multiplayer first-person shooters, so I've invited Gerard to come share his thoughts on Call of Duty and all things FPS. Gerard, welcome. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's because we're, we're, we're talking about Call of Duty 20 Vanguards do, 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 do. on the battlefield. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Call, uh, we're, we're here to talk about Call of Duty Battlefield. Yeah, so okay. 20, 20, 47. For those who haven't figured it out, uh, you have strong feelings or lack of feelings at all towards a lot of the more militaristic uh, shooters that are out there. I would say I would say that's more accurate in that I don't really have a feeling towards them at all. It's not like I hate them or, or just like, oh, they should go away. I think I've just, there's been so many of them mm -hmm. that if you showed me gameplay from Modern Warfare to Battlefield 1 to the Vanguard, I couldn't tell you what game it was. And yeah. and uh, I don't know if it's because I, I maybe just don't care enough or really it's just first person shooters in the military style just aren't for me. You know, I love first person shooters or rather the first person formula of things like Borderlands. I love Dishonored, you know, sneaking and stealthy, Deathloop, these games that have a lot more of a narrative hold and a lot more of your arising to the occasion via playing a character. But the military shooter is more or less just like, tag, just shoot people. Yep, it's, you know? it's, 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 it's just tag. It's yeah. like you're it, except it is it a large like wound to yeah. the chest or head. <laughs> I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. For me, it's like just coming home from a long day, being able to just sit down and tag some people up. It <laughs> makes me feel good because, you know, we go out there and we fight the world. So being able to hop in that digital space and being able to fight and, and do things that I can't do in real life, it makes me feel good. But also the intimacy of first person shooters. Mm. Um, you don't get that in third person. My problem, with, except for in Gears of War, because in Gears of War, when I crab walk, that was very intimate. But anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's cheating, a sign of love. Love to put the chainsaw to the chest. When yeah. you play something like Uncharted or Gears of War, you don't really feel the impact of when you're doing the combat, in my opinion. But when you're actually there, like Apex Legends, and I get to look my enemy in my eyes, in the eyes, and I get to stick that pistol to their face, it just, I don't know, makes me feel good. It speaks to my inner Joker. But I think, I think there's a distinct <laughs> difference between Apex and Overwatch and Borderlands versus 
Call of Duty, Vanguard, Battlefield. And not just visually, not but just like, visually, you know, but just substantively. Tone it, yeah, like Apex, I love. Overwatch, I love. I love that each character feels specific and unique and has purpose, mm. and there's different guns and play style, and some are punching, You don't some think are Ramirez kicking. is an original character? I mean, I just, I think it's just... <laughs> I don't know what that means, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, every Call of Duty's got a Ramirez. That's what basically. Yeah. <laughs> you could just say, like, dude, isn't John Smith sick from from Call of Duty? And I'd be like, sure. Like, handsome Jack, I know. You know, like, I, you know, uh, Tiny Tina. Tiny is Tina, a, for sure, for sure. We remember the name, right? I, but I Call of Duty, it's like, you mean the one where they mocapped a celebrity, like? That ah, one, yes. like I just, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. I and, mm -hmm. and I don't know. It's not a bad thing per se. It's just something that I, I just know. It's, I, it's just not for me. I'm, I'm not looking to play it. And when it does come out, I'll play it with friends for a little bit, and then I'm kind of done. It's interesting. So basically, you're saying that you want to find a world that you can connect to, and I'm kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. I want to disconnect from this world yeah. to be able to be able to shoot people. So that's actually interesting here in that perspective. I mean, I, th I think one thing we can all agree on is that Call of Duty is the last time that respect and Kevin Spacey had any, you know, <laughs> had any close guys proximity to one another. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's interesting. I actually like multiplayer shooters. The problem is I don't play them much because I always feel like I have to move on to another game to kind of get that one under my belt. That you know, you want to like, you need to have a relationship with that game to actually you know get your skills and be proficient. Um, Call of Duty probably more than any other online shooter is the one that I think that is least forgiving for someone in my situation where like, you know, you spawn, headshot happens, you know, say a Battlefield or, or definitely something like, like an Overwatch or an Apex Legends. Like I at least have moments there on the map so I can consider what I'm doing before I'm no longer on the map. Right. I think, I think another thing of why I'm really disinterested is because when I was a kid, it was CS Source. It was it was Counter Strike 1.4, 1.6, and and there you was voice. Yourself, by the way. I know, I know. It's okay. I'm okay with that. I take pride in Bo that. Boomer alert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, He's the boomer. Oh, <laughs> Methuselah here. I think they have your walker in the back. <laughs> anyway, oxygen tank. <laughs> Um, but I think I think when playing something like CS:GO or CS: Source, like it's more sandboxy. It's more like I know it to go. I pick up the gun and go. Whereas like I think and 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 communication was key, right? Yeah, some had voice chat, but most of it was like OGGs oh, or LOL, and then you say what you want to say. But I think because of the evolution of Xbox Live and PlayStation Network and how easy it is to just hop on a mic and and talk trash, it feels weird to to play an adult game and hear. 12 year old kids who are better than you say more awful things that you've ever said in your entire life in a way where it's like, it's like funny at first and then you're like do I call their parents like what do, what do I do and and I think that that that's a joke and meme that we all can kind of relate to mm. but that doesn't change from game to game that is like carried with us through these military shooters. So it's not even just the game. You're talking about strictly like the culture. You feel like there's a culture around first person shooters that you just can't get behind. Right, right, exactly. I, 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 I think that makes absolute sense. Now, um, outside of that, uh, is there something that Call of Duty or really any of the militaristic shooters out there, like, do they need to evolve? Obviously, they're very successful. I think that's 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 without a doubt. But, you know, is there, is, is there a point where they're like, if they don't, you know, change and evolve into something else, they're finally going to start losing that massive audience they currently have a holdover. I think as long as there's an audience out there that goes to work and works that nine to five and just wants to come home and decompress and be able to shoot at something, take that frustration. I mean, it's better than punching a hole in a wall. I think there's always going to be a market for a Call of Duty or a Battlefield. Now, will it be at the peak that it once was, maybe like in the early 2000s? I don't think so, but I think it'll always be there. Not to mention bacon skins, they, and they just inspire the youth, man. Yeah, yeah. And one thing about punching walls, make sure that it's just kind of like, you know, that, 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 that core wood mm -hmm. and not concrete because you can really hurt your knuckles. Not that I'm talking from experience or anything like that. Uh, Producers write that down, write that down. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I mean I, it, having played the single player also of this game, I, I, it's... It's strange. I like this format. I don't have a problem with like a shooting gallery type game mm -hmm. where like you don't really have any AI to speak of uh, and you sort of the enemies pop up and, and you ping them in the head. But uh, I think there's, there's a format there. I love the technology that's in the single player of the Call of Duty games. But 
you know, once upon a time, they were like a signature part of the package. You know, Modern Warfare 1, everyone initially was fixated on the single player. You know, the multiplayer became really big sort of after the launch of that game. And I, it'd be nice if we could sort of recapture that sense of like big, exciting action movie. And right now it's like, what does the game want me to do? And when I figure it out, I finally have a moment of pleasure, but it can be quite frustrating when you're playing a game and like, do I turn left or turn right? Because I keep on dying, you know, no matter where I go. I think something that would help me want to go into Call of Duty games a little bit more is the fact that there are so many of them. Every every year we get one. And it's not just Call of Duty, right? It's it's the same like you have your Maddens, you have your Assassin's Creed, you have those yearly entries. And I think we <laughs> It's almost like I need them to go away before I miss them. Yep. And Call of Duty is a franchise. That's a real life thing. Has not done that. It's mm -hmm. it's always been one a year, one a year, one a year. Even though it's a different studio, it's a different story, it's different presentation and mechanics, it's still in that zeitgeist. And again, if you were like, hey Gerard, here's Vanguard, here's Warfare 2, here's Black Ops 3, I couldn't tell you other than maybe the graphics and maybe the setting. But I couldn't tell you the difference. I think also if they took some time away, it would bring more people like you in, but also it would allow for the developers to have more innovation in their games because they have a fresh set of eyes and they don't have to sit there, like they don't have that pressure of making the game every year. So they're not constantly stressed out uh, trying to think of new original ideas. So I think them just kind of relaxing on it and being like, we'll put it out when we put it out. Look what that did for Assassin's Creed. Yeah. You know, you took oh, some yeah. time off and then we suddenly got Origins and it's like, this is like kind of a, it, it breathed life into a franchise that, didn't have life. I think, Absolutely. It, I think that had more to do with the fact that Bayek was a strong black man, but I mean, you know. Yeah, 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 do you think there's ever going to be an era where we're going to be like, hey, remember when Call of Duties were coming out? Or is it, is it going to be with us like a, like, like a good STD? I think it's always going to be with us, man. I think, I think there's, there's someone always, always, you know, what, what's the term of like, uh, if you, if you have a, if, if we had a cartoon show, right? Like your audience is going to stay from mm -hmm. that range of like eight to 12 and everyone always turns 13 somewhere, but they're always going to be people aging up into that. And I think that's essentially what the call to the audience is, right? Is there's always going to be that young adult audience who's like, I really want to play Call of Duty because my friends are playing it. And when the new one comes out, it's like, oh man, this is it. We're, we're jumping on in. And I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like it's always going to be a conversation topic every year. Yeah, I, I, I think one thing that should be appreciated is a lot of people who play Call of Duty and get excited for it coming out, they're not necessarily consuming a lot of other games throughout the course of the year. Right. That's their one game. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of the same way people treat Madden, the mm -hmm. way people treat I refer FIFA. to them as hardcore casuals. They don't play a lot of games, but the one game they do play, they play hardcore. They play hardcore. very, very heavily. Now, this is the big question I'm wondering about, and I don't think there's any way to answer it. Do you think that the very young generation of players that's in Fortnite right now, Will they move from Fortnite and go to a Call of Duty? Or are they going to be looking for something else when they feel that maybe that they're too old for the Fortnite experience? In my opinion, no, because I think those are two completely different audiences. I mean, half of the appeal of Fortnite is also kind of the aesthetic, what he was talking about, is the beautiful colors. But also, in my opinion, it takes more skill to play Fortnite. So I don't think mentally that crowd would be um, fixated on Call of Duty because they won't be as mentally stimulated as just kind of point and shoot its tag versus you got to build whole buildings in, in Fortnite. I don't think it'll give them that stimulation, so they'll be looking for something else. I, um, think. I, I, just, I just want to point out to the audience that it was Corey that said that smarter people need to play Fortnite than Call of Duty, so just send it all his that. way. Put the camera. I can't stand that game. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving my humble opinion. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, uh, I think that is, uh, that, that's, that uh, we, we just added, we just gave our first score to a game here on the X-Play. Uh, so like, let's take a moment and appreciate the Suck transcendence. Yeah. There I you can't have wait it. for them to reference it 10 it. years down yeah. the road. You remember X when you said Call of Duty? I don't remember. Well, there you have it. X-Play's first official relaunch rating. Like that's what the tingling feeling you have right now, that or an imminent heart attack. Let us know your favorite Call of Duty title in the comments below. And if you've been playing Vanguard, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out an exclusive interview with two of the narrative developers in Call of Duty Vanguard, Alexa and Belinda. And of course, Frosk in my review of Forza Horizon 5.